Listen to the 48 Hours podcast for shocking murder cases and compelling real life dramas from one of television's most watched true crime shows. Go behind the scenes of each episode with award winning CBS News correspondents and producers in Post Mortem, a weekly deep dive. Listen to 48 Hours wherever you get your podcasts. Excuse me, I'm just going to go freshen up. Hey everybody, it's Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks. Today we're talking about freshening up for less. So freshening up your decor for less. It might be bleak and gray and snowing or raining where you are, or even if it's beautiful outside, your house might look just a little dull these days. So we've got some really great ideas on how you can fill that craving for something new and fresh and well, even twinkly. Dreary weather in in November and December feels very festive and, and ooh, cozy. You know, oh, let's get out the hot chocolate and the hot drinks. And then in January and February, it just feels yucky somehow. <laughs> I know. And especially now because we're over our birthday because, you know, that's a big celebration. <laughs> I know. I know. Other than our birthday, January can be a little dull. It it can be. And, you know, as a kid, my dad would say, what do you want to do on your birthday? And I would always say, oh, I want to go horseback riding or something like that. And he would say, uh, it's January. <laughs> How about you ice can't skating? do that in January. <laughs> right, right, right. So today we're going to talk to you about freshening up without spending money or very little, if you must, and and doing something to combat the dolls that you won't regret later. Because sometimes you think, oh, I'm going to do something now because you're feeling a little dull in your home and you really want to spice it up. And maybe come springtime, you're going to regret that. So none of the suggestions we're making today are too bold or too crazy that you might regret them. They're just little tweaks to your home. So I think the first thing I like to think about is just moving things around in your room and try that before buying anything because you've gotten used to things in one particular spot and you probably have gotten where your eyes just kind of ignore it. And so sometimes it's not that that you have stuff that needs to be replaced, but that you're just bored seeing it where it is. So for example, I did get some really pretty botanical prints for Christmas uh, this year and I ended up putting them up uh, in my hallway. And yes, that is something new. However, everything else, I just kind of moved some things around. And I could not get over how I had a completely new look in my hallway. And uh, so there was really just one new purchase. Okay, there was one other little thing, a little cute little pine cone. (laughs) Okay. But other than that, everything was the same. We need to give you some truth serum. (laughs) Yeah, but I'm just saying those are two changes but it made a massive difference. And the other things, I just moved in from other rooms. And I cannot tell you how exciting and fresh and how much I love my hallway now. And I hadn't realized how much I really didn't like what I had in there before. Yeah. And especially with that type of room, because it's transitional room, you don't spend a lot of time in there looking around. So you might just keep walking by the things that have been there and it's not really doing anything for you. And what a fun way to shake it up. Totally on the same page with you, Anita. And my suggestion is maybe even a little more radical, but not spending any money, remove everything from every surface in your home. Now you could do this room by room. I like to do this. You're cleaning up anyway. Wouldn't you just do it room by room? You wouldn't do your whole house, would you? Over time. I wouldn't probably do every room at the same time. So room by room. I was feeling anxiety. I was feeling stressed. How do I remember where it goes? Well, that's the point. You might (laughs) shake it up. So take the things from the living room. Take stuff off every surface. Now, if you're spending a whole lot of time in there taking stuff off surfaces, then maybe you've got too much stuff anyway, right? So we want to be careful there when we put things back. So what I like to do is take everything off, especially after the holiday decorations come down. You need to wipe everything and clean it anyway. Take everything off. 
put it on another surface, maybe your dining room table or your kitchen island or something like that. Just get it out of that room and then go in and have a look. Oh, wow. Okay. That feels a little bare, but fresh and clean. And then you can start to put the things back, but really analyze each thing before you put it back. Because Things have inertia, right? If it goes somewhere, that's just kind of where it stays. I mean, there are people that have things that they don't move. You know, 20 years later, that fill in the blank is still in the same spot or that framed photo is still there. Well, maybe you want to update the picture inside of it or something like that. So freshen the spaces like that and it really opens your mind to the possibilities of how your beautiful items can play together in whatever room you're working in when everything is cleared away. Because if everything's just still sitting there and you just pick it up and you whatever, you dust under it or you just remove one thing, everything else has its spot. And it doesn't give you the opportunity to rethink how you might want to use these items. So true. And I would add to that, before you take anything down, Take a picture of the room so you can have, see what it looked like as your before picture. Then you're going to take everything tip. down and move things around. And what I would suggest is try things maybe about three different ways and take pictures each way. And then it's amazing as you're looking at those pictures, you're going to look at one, hopefully, and you're going to say, that's the one I want. And then you can remember how you had it because maybe it was three iterations back and you could put it up that way it and it also it's fun to have those pictures over time of how it's it's changed that's such a great tip absolutely because sometimes you do have it and can't remember (laughs) what you did i know another idea is along the same lines is if you want to freshen up and use some new i'm using air quotes new things Dig into the back of those cabinets. I know you all have one or a few or the closet or someplace that you've tucked away some items that you just don't use that much or stuff you got tired of a year or two ago. Well, let's bring them out. Show them in the light of day. See if maybe you want to use them again. You might be able to give those things that are languishing in the back of a cabinet some new life. So bring them out. Put them on that surface, whether you're a dining table or your your kitchen island or some other place where you're collecting all the things that you took off of the surfaces. Bring out those things that have been tucked away and see how you can maybe play with those and then create new vignettes or new little decor setups And along these lines, I think the next place to go is if you have a china cabinet or cupboard or someplace where you have your dishes displayed, to take all that down and do the same thing there. And this is where it's fun to kind of change things up. And maybe you want to do it a couple times a year where maybe you just, okay, maybe this is just me, but sometimes I have my purple dishes out and then sometimes I have my red dishes out or my blue dishes (laughs) I'm okay. sure it's not I'm... just you, but it is so you. <laughs> <laughs> so I, if you have a couple of different sets of dishes, you can change them out uh, in your china cabinet uh, or just kind of rearrange things. Just thinking about how I have my Christmas spo dishes that I use in the month of December. And after Christmas, when they had all the big sales, I uh-huh. bought some Thanksgiving dishes. And when I say Thanksgiving dishes, I didn't buy like, listen, no, wait a minute. I did not buy a hundred, a hundred pieces. I bought four okay. plates, four plates. Oh, but they good were girl. This, see the spode woodland. Do you remember, you know, those? The one, is that one with the turkey on it? Well, they have different animals. I mean, it's a whole assortment. I mean, I can see that people might collect these. Oh, an assortment. So, I got the ones. so you can get a turkey, you can get an elk, you can get, um, well, I got the ones with the bunnies, but there's different animals. There's fish. I mean, you can get any animal. Wait, can you use the bunnies for Easter? I think you could, except it's brown. I mean, it's brown on the outside, but yes, I think you could. Oh, but you but could any- do an all all natural Easter display. So. Yeah. So anyway, well, Perfect. the point was, so I have these and, you know, I have, here's the thing. Get your white serving dishes or your cream serving dishes, and then you can switch out your plates. So those are going to be, that's what I was thinking was, I have a few other brown plates that I'll use with those. And that's going to be my fall dishes now. I'm going to use those in October and November. Then I've got my Christmas plates for December. And I also (laughs) just got some more spring plates. Oh, my goodness. I know. But I think the idea is rotate things. And if you have some things to rotate, you're not going to be so bored. Or you could even do with your dishes. I have like several different patterns. 
And there's just like, I have a few of this, a few of that, but they all go together. So I just kind of have a different kind of plate when I pull out each time. I never know which plate I'm going to get. I just kind of grab from the top. I love it. Well, <laughs> do you have to put that in your calendars? Today's the day we're rotating out. We're doing Thanksgiving plates. I might have to, Christmas. now that I have more, I might have to do that. So you I'm might have, have to, to give yourself a little, yeah, and which ones a little calendar ones. tickler to get that going. And when you mentioned like a china cabinet or a cupboard or something like that, I think also when something is behind doors or behind glass, you're like, that's just the way it is. I don't have to go in there or I set that up 10 years ago. I'm just going to leave it. Don't leave it. (laughs) Fling those doors open. Let's see what's going on in there. And when you're doing all of this, assess what you have. And this is a great time then when you have all the things in this central location that I'm talking about, or like Anita's saying you're taking something out of a cupboard, you're having a good look at it for you to curate. If you don't like something, then don't put it back out. Right? We tell you this all the time. Even if someone gave it to you, don't stick it in the back of the cupboard. Just move it on to a new home. And then you can try to incorporate some new things together. And so you really got a fresh, good look and you've tightened it up. So you've curated it. So it really is all things that you really, really love, or at least you really, really, really like. Table linens. So table linens is not something that I use regularly. I might use a tablecloth for Christmas dinner or Thanksgiving or something like that. And it's really just sort of protect my table. But if you have linens like that, and particularly I think runners are great for this, what a great pop of either color or winter white or even some metallics or something like that. And I think Anita talked to us about a snow leopard runner a couple of episodes ago. So that would be great for January and February. Oh, so- Kelly, I got some of those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Anita, that's no surprise. I knew you were going to get those. And I'm sure many people listening did too. So if you did and you didn't use it at Christmas time, this is a perfect time, February, March even, to use this. So take out some table linens. If you really just need a pop of color or you feel like, oh, really, it is a little boring in here with all the decorations gone, then throw a table linen on. Do it like we do where it doesn't even cover the whole table. You just kind of put it on this you know, little – like like a diamond on a round or a diamond on an oval or even a diamond on a rectangle table is great or a runner. So you've probably all got something tucked away somewhere in a drawer or in a cabinet. So go have a look, see what you've got, bring it out, make it fresh and new. Sometimes when you put a tablecloth on that completely covers the top of your table, like a traditional fitting of a tablecloth, it looks like you're getting ready to eat there. And it looks a little odd to have that on if you're not actually using the table to eat on. So I agree. That's really not something I think people typically do when they're not using the table. So otherwise, it is nice, especially if there's no color in your dining room or very little, to add something with a table runner. Uh, But the other thing is what you just said. What I like to do is to get a smaller tablecloth and turn it the wrong direction where the edges Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's like a little bit small anyway, where you can see the mm-hmm. sides of the, your table. Right. And then it hangs down. In fact, on my dining room table right now, I have a vintage tablecloth and it the edges of the table on both sides are bare. Uh, and I'm actually going to link to this because I just did this and I, I'm, I'm going to link to my Instagram post so you can see what I'm talking about. But it just kind of added some color in there. So I think it's such a great thing to do. And I just ordered one from Etsy too, a cool vintage one that's plaid. And I cannot wait to get it on the table. And here's the thing. Don't chintz on your runner. I love what Anita's saying. And I use tablecloths that way. So you can chintz on your tablecloth. It can be smaller. But if the runner's just kind of like barely coming over the edge, that's not a great look. So go a little longer with the runner. And if you can't go longer or they don't make them longer or your table's super long, you could do this little cheat. So you can get two of the same, have the meat in the middle, put something in the middle, like a bowl or a terrine, something that's kind of cover them and you sort of like sit on the where the seam would be. Maybe put it on a platter. So you're covering the seam. You see what I'm talking about? I love that idea. I think that's a great idea. And then when you're actually eating there, the other thing you can do rather than placemats is turn that, get two of the table runners and turn them the other way and use them like uh, placemats on both sides. 
Whoa, we could just keep going on and on, and then uh, you I, can I, use it as a shawl. I think we discussed <laughs> that in one of the episodes. If well, it's a I little chilly, about... you can just grab it off the table and use it. So the other thing that I've done is add plants. And, you know, there's been a lot of studies about how plants make people happier in the office and at home. And the thing about it is I am getting tired of, I have lost a few. There's been a few casualties, but for the That's most okay. part, I have, kept, I have kept most of them alive, but it is a lot of work watering them because I take them all out, put them <laughs> in the sink, you know, soak them and then put them back in their little pots. And then I have to clean out all the dirt from my sink. So it's kind of a job. Uh, so I did add one or two bow plants. So I think if you can find something, you know, the greenery is easier to get away with. If they're flowers, it's sometimes it's really obvious that it's fake. So you really don't want to do it unless it really looks real. But definitely some ferns and things like that do tend to look real. Some of them. I mean, just be careful what you get. Yeah, yeah, I have to be careful. And maybe we can link to some of our episodes because we've done episodes oh, on that's right. using fake flowers and faux arrangements and things like that, what to look for and what to avoid. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show, but keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with quince. Go to quince.com DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well. And we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. We would be remiss if we did not tell you to take out your pillow covers and switch them out. Now, you all should have really nice inserts. So if you have your drawer or your cabinet where you've got your other pillow covers, just go in, pick something else out. And if you don't have anything that you feel like using right now, this very inexpensive buy are those IKEA velvet pillow covers. Depending on the time of year or depending about the colors that they have available, sometimes they're even just $7.99. So I've seen them from $7.99, maybe up to $14.99, but it's the Sanello. Could be butchering the name, but I think that's it. But if you put in IKEA velvet pillows, you'll see them. They come 20 by 20. Now, here's the trick with IKEA or 
trick's probably not the right word. This is a cautionary tale. When you buy the 20 by 20s from them at this really reasonable price, they also will offer you a very reasonably priced insert. But the insert at $8.99 is a 20 by 20. Now, what is the rule? Hello, Ikea. What is the rule? You need to have an (laughs) insert that's two inches bigger than your pillow cover. I don't know why they do that. They have inserts that fit their euros that are bigger, but they don't have that next increment up from 2020 to the 2022. Well, they're probably not very plump either. There's a great variation in plumpness of pillows, (laughs) pillow inserts. So and that's is. another reason. Please that's don't another... take that out of context. <laughs> <laughs> well, so go with the, so that's why you need to go with a bigger one. Cause some of them are just kind of flat. Yes. So what I would suggest is even though it's tempting to just stick an insert for eight ninety nine into your Ikea card, don't do it. Either use a 22 by 22 that you already have and just, you know, switch out this cover and put it in a 20 by 22 insert or get yourself a 22 by 22 insert someplace else. Because the IKEA ones at 20 by 20 do not fill out the 20 by 20 covers. Did I confuse everyone? (laughs) Yeah, no, I got it. Well, right. And if it's a really small pillow, you just get the same size, but the bigger it is, Yes. The more you need to go up a little bit inside. Can I just talk about our pillows that we used to make at Bespoke? Yes. Because I pulled out some of those just now after the holidays, and they're just beautiful. I have to say the ladies who created our pillows for us did an amazing job. So I have some of those leopard print ones. Remember we had those with the, it was like either a brown sort of, you know, sort of a rift off a leopardy or we also Mm -hmm. offered it in the blue. Well, of course I have the browns and blacks with a little ruffle on the edge. Those are some dynamite pillows. So if anybody out there had enjoyed our bespoke pillows and you've got those somewhere in a drawer, pull them out, put them back on those inserts and get them out on your sofa. Excellent idea. Yeah, those, uh, I still have a, a bunch. I bought a bunch of those for myself. So they're all over my, my house. So the next thing is paint. And I know that's one of mm, your favorite things to do. That was my Kelly. next thing too. I recently painted my cabinetry in my living room blue. And I am so happy I did that. I cannot believe what a change it made. So we're not just talking about painting walls in your house, but painting furniture. The other thing I did was, and I used paint instead of wax, but I cherused my dining room table because I never liked the stain color. It was kind of toward the orange. uh, And I didn't realize it was going to be that way until it arrived. And I did that. And now it has kind of a gray color to it. And it is so pretty now. I am so happy I did that. I love ceruse or cerusing, however you would say that. Maybe that should be a TTT to find someday. Oh, yes. That is a really interesting take on a stain and it's just a lovely look. I toyed with that for the floors at our house because I was just sort of wrapped up with ceruzing at that point. I'm really glad I didn't do it on, on all the floors because I don't think it would have worked with my house, but on a piece of furniture, gorgeous. I didn't know you did that. Good for you. Right. Yeah. I need to show some pictures of that, but it, it made a massive difference. So there's so much you can do with paint. So if you've got something You really like the piece of furniture, but you don't like the stain color or the paint color. Just whip out that pot of paint and you'll be good. Well, guess what I did? What did you do? Two ago. Well, I had it done. I had my... (laughs) I had it done. Okay. (laughs) I had it done. I uh, had my master bedroom painted. Peter went on a little business trip and a few things changed and refreshed around here (laughs) while he was gone. Uh, yeah, I was like, oh, this will be easier when the other person that sleeps in this room is not around. And you know how we've been talking about adding more color and you know how enamored we are. Did you go from a light shade of white to a darker shade of white? <laughs> no. You know really? how enamored we are of the English look and we've been talking about that and we even did an episode about a particular London townhouse and we talked about adding in more color and I've been toying yes. with this because you know I love that ochre yellowy color that sort yes. of burnt yellow and that is my accent color. I love it but it was also it's in some of the stained glass that's in the house. So I wanted to roll with that. But I've been thinking about doing a room in that color. I used to have yellowy rooms in the way back when I was autumnal. And now 
I'm no longer autumnal, but I have a Sudbury yellow Farrow and Ball bedroom. And I Did you love really? it. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. You have to send me a picture. I will. I must I will. have a picture. Yeah, the room is still sort of uh, in process. I'm not totally done, but as soon as I'm done, I will take some photos and post them on my IG, and then I can link them in the show notes. But if anybody is sort of toying with or teetering on the edge of adding some color, I say go for it. I have a very neutral palette, but that is my pop color. And I thought, what a great place to bring that in is in the bedroom. And it's a North facing room. So I had done a lot of research because, you know, yellow is a really hard paint color. We've talked about that in a lot of our paint episodes. And I once did a yellow that was just so bad in a guest room that I had to repaint it myself. And I didn't want to make this mistake, but it is glowing. Even when it's not getting a lot of natural daylight. It, that, like around three or four o'clock in the afternoon, that room is just, uh, you just want to be in there. It's beautiful. Even when it was painted simply white. But so now- So I have to ask, mm-hmm. did you go with Farrow and Ball paint or just yes. color? Oh, okay. So, Ball paint. You, so mm-hmm. what about it? So let me know. 7% they, they... sheen is what I use. They have 2% sheen, 7% sheen. And they're- classic is the 2% sheen, which is their their matte. And I didn't want to do that because I wanted a little bit more light to bounce around. So I did their 7% sheen, which, you know, you can't really draw a, an equivalent. You can't say, oh, their 7% sheen is like a eggshell because it's really not. It's less than that. So they're really, you can't really just sort of across the board compare it to a different sheen from a different paint maker. But yes, there's just something about their pigments that is spot on. Mm, So it was great, especially in this north facing room, which I just never liked the color, even though I love that simply white. I love it all over my house. I love it on the exterior of my house. But in that north facing room, it just kind of, yeah, not to overuse the word dull today, but it was just dull. Oh, that is so exciting. I will take a in-process picture. I am so excited to see this. Okay. <laughs> Good. And kudos to you. Oh, that sounds so exciting. And another thing that I used, and it wasn't on my list, but I may have mentioned to everyone before, and I will mention it now because it's my master bathroom that's attached to it. I had used um, pasted paper, which is now rebranded or retitled as uh, J. Campbell. It's Julie Campbell's company. And I had used the pasted paper wallpaper, which comes in these very manageable sheets, like 36 inches by, I don't know the exact off the top of my head, maybe 18 or 14. So easy to install. And that would be a great refresh because even the removable adhesive wallpaper, you know, imagine trying to do that by yourself. You know, like, what do you have to do? Hold it with your arms stretched out and run to the wall and smack it on? Like, it's hard to do. You need another person, right? But these you could do by yourself. You could put them in panels. You could do a bathroom. You could do, I mean, you could do a big room, but I think that it's, they're really great uses in smaller spaces. You could even do your closet. So fun. So when I put the pictures on, you'll see, cause I'll, I'll use uh, pictures from the master bathroom too. Oh, so you're definitely doing the wallpaper in there. I did it. Mm-hmm. Oh, you've already, oh, Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. I need to. Well, I did that before. I know I had done that before when we first, I think when I first interviewed Julie, so we could link that episode as well. Cause it's a really great episode with her. She's a very creative, interesting woman. But um, yeah, I had done that a while ago and I wanted to sort of, I was still noodling on the paint and I would, I got, I did what, you know, I took our own advice and I got sampleized samples. Good. I even got a little pot of the Sudbury yellow from Farrow and Ball so I could really see what that would look like on the wall. You know, does does their pigment really make a difference? And I'm here to say it does. So I love it. Excellent. Well, and back to you talking about that London townhouse. Remember the the highlight of the London townhouse were those gorgeous lampshades. So Mm -hmm. that's what I was going to suggest. And I'm seeing them around, especially with our friend Oka. They have the printed lampshades. So that is really getting hot now are the colorful patterned lampshades. So if you add that into your room, you can really get a fresh new look and a lot of pattern and a lot of fun. 
Yeah. And we really encourage you to update those lampshades because it makes such a difference. I like metallics in January, February time. So we're just dipping into February today. It's the first. So you can enjoy these through, I would say, depending on where you live in the country. I mean, there's no hard rule. I mean, you can wear white after Labor Day these days, right? It doesn't matter. You can wear patent leather shoes whenever you want. There are no rules anymore. And you can definitely carry the metallics through into the spring and add in springy colors if you want. But they're perfect, I think, for January, February, and into March. And I love to mix the metals, so the gold and silver, so years ago, and it's also a nice transition from the holidays because, you know, you've definitely usually got a little sparkle going on and then there's no sparkle. So you can take out the color, the reds or the greens or whatever colors, or if you were celebrating Hanukkah or what have you and you used blues or used different colors for the holidays, you can still keep your metallics. I bought these metallic pillow covers at TJ Maxx years ago and they're just lumbars and I, they're just spectacular. They're kind of like a muted uh, metallic, but they're definitely metallic. And they just are such a pop in my living room right now. Add in some mercury glass, which is great. If you have silver bowls, you don't have to what do you call that? Uh, polish them. You don't even have to do that. Oh. They can be tarnished. You don't even know what the word is anymore. What is that word? It. Yeah, and pictures, things like that. And you know, maybe these are things you maybe these are some of the things that were languishing in the back of the cabinets. Bring them out. So I had silver bowls sitting on my dining room table. I had a big uh, tureen filled with pine cones for the holidays, and then I had two silver bowls that I had thrifted somewhere, and I put red shiny brights in them. The shiny bright you know ornament balls. So obviously I'm not going to leave those out in, in January and February. So out they came. And what did I do? I filled them with lemons and it looks great and it smells great. What a great idea. And while you're talking about things that kind of work at Christmas that you can keep out, what about the fairy lights? I think those, and I'm talking about the, the thin, not Christmas lights, but these thin little wires that have tiny little LED lights that you can wrap up and put in a, a cloche or wrap, or you could have even wrapped it around your greenery. These are great to just kind of have like in a bowl with your, with whatever, with your, whatever you've got in there, maybe something silvery to reflect the light, maybe on your mantle, you could put it in, in, um, in like a planter with a plant. I just think that's a fun thing to do. That was one of my favorite tips that I had on my list today. And I love oh. that you differentiated. Yes, I know. We're really on the same page today. I am really glad that you differentiated between just the strand of Christmas lights and the fairy lights, because I had definitely had that to make a point of to share with everyone. You don't want to just take a strand of your Christmas lights and then wrap it around your fiddly fig or whatever, your mid-sized plant, because it's just going to look like you took a strand of Christmas lights <laughs> off your Christmas tree. Yes, and then you're like, yes. I'm sad. I I am dull. I want to just throw these over here and on my plants. It's so it, mm, it, they're just... The, they're, they don't look clunky on a Christmas tree or a wreath or a garland at that time of year, but they will look clunky on a house plant, whether you've got the, and certainly if you've got the white plastic wiring, but if you've got even the green plastic wiring, you can see it. It just, it's not the right vibe. So maybe this is a place where you make a purchase or you replace the batteries or whatever needs to be done in your fairy lights. So look for the ones that have the copper or the very thin metal uh, wiring and it's super thin. It's almost like a filament and then the little tiny fairy light. And so you really won't see the wiring and just, you know, kind of drape it and tuck it well, in. Well, you'll see it, but it looks cool. Yeah, if you and if you do see that the metal, that's fine too. And when they first came out, I remember buying my first strand of fairy lights. I remember my first. <laughs> you always Aww, remember your first, don't uh, but you? from ter <laughs> yeah, well, from terrain, and I spent like you know probably thirty six dollars on them or something. Yeah, I mean, you can get a nice long strand of fairy lights now for a very reasonable price because they're everywhere now. So maybe invest in something like that. You know, just a few bucks in something like that. And if you've got a house plant already. Dress it up. It's going to look great.
That's great. Uh, do you have anything else? Well, I do. If you had a scented candle for the holidays, even if it's pine, maybe it's time to just extinguish that one and put it away in your bins or put it away for next year. Try a new scent. That'll really freshen up your space. Maybe something that smells like Narcissus would be even nice. I mean, that's still sort of holiday-ish, but it has that really crisp, fresh scent or something that is more musky or a heavy floral. I wouldn't go for a really light, like a rose or something at this time of year. If you really want to have the scent infuse your home at this time of year, I would do something that is a little heavier, a little woodsier. I think that would really be nice. And then a very practical tip, change out your air filters and clean your ceiling fan blades. So that will really freshen up. Oh, that's a great idea. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm like, oh, after you do all the fun stuff, <laughs> change out your bedding if you haven't already. If you have, it's kind of nice to have two or three different covers for your bed so you can kind of change them out. Or if you have neutral bedding, you can just change out the blanket. Maybe you have a duvet or a blanket folded at the foot of your bed. So I've got the long drop bedspread. And so I just use a different blanket to kind of change things up, fold it at the foot of my bed. Right now I have a blue leopard print blanket that's really cool. You could use a tartan one. This is where you could put that that uh, leopard, snow leopard uh, throw, kind of fold that up at the foot of the bed for the winter. I, it's just kind of a fun way to kind of change up your look. Oh, yeah. So what's our DTT defines for today? It is ticking fabric. And this was your idea. I thought it was a great idea to cover this. And I also wondered, why is it called ticking? Me too. So it, yes. Okay. So I, I found out some information for it. So it's a durable striped fabric made from a very tightly woven cotton or linen, or it could be made of a mix of cotton and linen. So it's a heavy fabric and it used to be used to cover mattresses and bed pillows. We know that. And it's a specific type of fabric because it's very tightly woven and this was to keep the feathers or hay or whatever from poking through the material. So it's traditionally striped and there's a thin stripe, a thicker stripe and a thin stripe that repeats all the way across. And I don't know why they went with stripes, but they did, I guess, to make it a little more interesting. It gets its name from the Latin word tika and the Greek word thika which means case or covering. So the fabric is accredited to the French, of course, and it was originally made in Nîmes, France. Uh, and then Sister Parish kind of made it popular in the 90s as a very mm -hmm. hot home decor fabric. Love that, Sister Parish. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, that's very interesting. And it's, you know, something you've come across. It might be the first fabric, you know, I was ever introduced to that I knew the generalized name of, ticking fabric. And But who knew? And now we have all this info. Well, the great thing about it is that ticking is such a simple pattern, you know, it's a stripe. So you can use it with almost any fabric. You can use it with a floral, a check, a... Uh, just any kind of pattern or a solid. It just works with just about everything. I love the fact that you can pair it with something that's super fancy and it kind of knocks the edge off that a little bit and just makes the whole tableau a little bit more approachable. It's a very approachable fabric, like gingham. It's it's charming. And you can use it in a very cottagey sense, but you could also use it on a very high end. Something with some very expensive chintzes or other fabrics and mixing it in with the ticking, I think is such a great look. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. 
You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Inevitably, with the new year come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Yes. So what is your crush? Oh, I really, really enjoyed this book. I knew I was going to like it. But I loved it with capital letters. Melissa Penfold is an Australian designer and decorator. I have followed her on Instagram for years and I've popped over to her website now and again. I suggest you all do as well. She has such an amazing aesthetic. Her look is just fabulous. And she's in Australia, you know, in sort of the New South Wales area, which I think if someone said tomorrow you have to move to Australia, I'd be like, well, that's where I'm going because <laughs> I, I love the look. I love the houses. I just, I love the whole aesthetic. It just really suits me. It's got a little bit of sort of a little cottage, lots of antiques. And it seems to also have like a little bit of this Hamptons vibe or a little California vibe to it. I just love the whole aesthetic. And she just has such a gimlet eye for amazing interiors and decors and the way to put things together. It's a large format book. It's called Living Well by Design. It's very well written. And I need, I must say, Maybe she's been listening to the podcast or maybe oh, we're just on the okay. same page with a Melissa because she has a lot of the same advice that we give out, reinforcing that, but also giving you new, fresh ideas. And the photography is stunning. And I think I mentioned it's large format. So I mean, the pictures are really big and really beautiful. And because it's a bigger book, it's just a great stacker for your decor books on their, your coffee table or elsewhere because it's a great bottom base because it's much larger than a normal book. So really, really, I'm enjoying it. I mean, I've been through it once and now I sat down and I'm going through it again. And uh, as I mentioned, the um, writing is great too, because sometimes in the decor books, the writing is not so good. Uh, the writing is terrific and photos top notch. You're going to have a lot of inspiration from this book. Oh, that sounds okay. I'm going to have to check it out. That sounds exciting. And mine is also a book. It's Lizzie McGraw's Creative Style, Livable, Lovable Spaces. And it says words by Fifi O'Neill and photography by Mark Lohman. And Mark Lohman did a bunch of photos for my house uh, in several magazines. So it's a beautiful book full of images that you would expect Fifi to be associated with. It, there are, it's kind of a rustic style, kind of has a vintage vibe. And kind of a rustic vibe. It's very casual. So I will link to this uh, at Amazon so you can check it out. And decor books are a great treat for this time of year. So if you are feeling a little um, down or a little dull in your home, 
buy yourself a decor book. It's going to look great on display and you're going to have hours of enjoyment pouring over the photographs. That's certainly what I've been doing. I, I got a little stack for myself for Christmas slash birthday and I have been really enjoying going through them. Well, me too. I got some gorgeous books that I am thoroughly enjoying. So thanks so much for hanging out with us. And remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult. We can't wait to talk to you.